Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. Waalaikumsalam Shah. Good morning Pechong. Waalaikumsalam Aisyah. Waalaikumsalam Nurin. Good morning Amanda. Good morning Jiva. Waalaikumsalam Najwa. Good morning Gan. Okay, so I hope you guys are ready. Okay, good morning Jini. Hi Fir. Waalaikumsalam Hamza. Hi Zafran. Good morning Liu. Okay, so um, alright, so today we are having two guests with us to join us for um, lecture this morning. Okay, so let's welcome Zahid and Haris. Okay. So let's welcome. Good morning, Zahid. Good morning, Haris. So can you hear me? Yes, madam. Okay, so Zahid and Haris, are you guys ready for lecture this morning? Yes, madam. I'm ready. Zahid, are you ready? Okay, Zahid seems to leave the stream. I'm not sure whether he's having a problem with his internet connection. Good morning, Anakyu. All right, okay, so um, let's begin. Okay, so today we're going to discuss topic 8, probability. So these are okay, the learning outcomes that we are going to accomplish. So by the way, this topic, it consists of only one subtopic. All right. Okay. So we are going to accomplish this. But um, if you are not able to finish all today, so I uh, will continue. Okay. This Friday. Okay. So we will continue accomplishing these learning outcomes this Friday. Okay. So we will see. Okay. The progress of our discussion today. Okay, so I hope you can stay with me. Okay, until the end. Morning, Azariel. Morning, Patricia. Morning, Hazim. Morning, Fast. Who is this Fast? Okay, because you are not using your your name, your full name. Okay, so okay, so Zaid is now back. Okay, Zaid, are you ready for our lecture this morning? Ready, ready ah? Madam. Okay, so all right, so we ready, will ready. Uh, ready ah? Okay, probability topic eight. So this, okay, okay, Farisha. All right, okay. So today we will discuss topic eight, and this topic is quite important. Why? Because it will be covered in uh, both. Uh, it will be tested in um, both assignment. Okay. Your group assignment and also PSPM. Okay, so you need to um, make sure, okay, that once we accomplish the learning outcomes, so you have to test yourself whether you fully understand the, the contents or not. Okay, so we are going to accomplish this learning outcomes today. Okay, so first we are going to define the concept of experiments, outcomes, events, sample spaces, and random selections. And then we will discuss, okay, the basic laws of probability. Okay, and then we are going to find probability of an event. Okay, so first thing first, what is probability? When we mention about the word probability, what comes in your head? Zahid, what do you think about probability? What is basically uh, probability? Probability is... Uh, uh, in layman's language, in layman's language. Apa yang awak faham tentang probability? Um, probability ni macam Dengar tak? Dengar-dengar uh, Apa? Kebarang kalian? Um, um, kebarang kalian Dia macam kena agak-agak kot Kena agak-agak Okay, we find the probability Haris, when when we mention about probability What comes in your head? Uh, kalau saya, saya macam fikir dia dalam satu event ada banyak possibility lah. 
Sesuatu benda tu okay. akan terjadi Alright, possibility. Okay, okay, kebarang kalian. Okay, ada Najwa cakap kat sini komen, kemungkinan yang akan berlaku. Alright, so probability is about um, finding possibility. Huh? Okay, the other word is about possibility. Okay, uh, possibility of an event. Okay, or probability is um, the, the tendency of something happens. Alright, okay, so yeah, because um, yeah, in our life, we always deal with uncertainties okay so we do not know for sure what will happen next right okay so in mathematics we can find actually the probabilities all right for something that we do know the the value of it okay but again okay for example when when it comes to your pspm results okay so you can actually predict or you can find the probabilities of you getting for flat or okay the probability of you getting a for maths For example, okay, so let's say if you study, if you do the tutorial and pass your questions, then you know that the probability of you getting A will be higher, right? Okay, so that is probability. Okay, it's about uh, finding the possibilities. Okay, so now let's begin. Okay, so we have this, all right? Um, okay, uh, let's, okay, let's start with the definition first, huh? Okay, so suppose that a process that could lead to two or more different outcomes is to be observed and there is certainty beforehand as to which outcome will occur. Okay, so we know that the, the possible outcomes, yeah, that will occur. So below are some examples. Okay, so let's see the first one. So a coin is tossed. Okay, so when you toss a coin, so there is a possibility that you will get either head or tail. Okay, then when a die is rolled, so when you roll a die, so there is a possibility that you get, okay, a one of the six outcomes. It's either you get number one or you get number two, okay, or you get number three, number three, number four, number five, and number six. Okay, and then uh, the third example, a consumer is asked which one of the two products he or she prefers. Okay, so which one of the two products is either the first product or the second product. So there is a possibility or probability between the two products. And then fourth example, an item from a set of accounts is examined by an auditor, okay? And then the daily change produced by a particular process is tested to determine whether it contains more than an allowable percentage of impurity, okay? So each of these examples involve a random experiment, okay? So let's go through the definition first, okay? Even though the definitions will not be tested in uh, the exam, but okay, we go through these definitions so that you will be understand okay you will be able to understand the the contents then eh, that we we're going to discuss throughout the throughout the lecture yeah? okay so what is a random experiment so a random experiment is a process leading to at least two possible outcomes with uncertainty as to which they will occur okay so for example if a coin is thrown then the result will either be a head or a tail Then if a die is rolled, the result will be one of the numbers, yeah? It's either one or two or three, so on and so forth. Okay, then what about possible outcomes, okay? So the possible outcomes of a random experiment are called the basic outcomes and the set of all basic outcomes is called the sample space, okay? So notice that basic outcomes are defined in such a way that no two outcomes can occur simultaneously. Okay, moreover, the random experiment must necessarily lead to the occurrence of one of the basic outcomes. Okay, so the symbol S will be used to denote the sample space. Okay, so what does it mean here? No two outcomes can occur simultaneously. For example, if you roll a die, so there is no possibility that you can get number two and number three at the same time, right? Because they are on different sides, okay? So that is what we call a sample space now, okay? So the sample space, the outcomes, the two outcomes cannot occur at the same time. Okay, so example, a coin is tossed. The basic outcomes will either be head or tail. So thus, the sample space is this. Okay, so S is denoted for sample space, okay? While the outcomes, okay, the outcomes are listed as elements of this set. Nah. So you can see the H and T are elements of the set. So we use set notation, yeah? Okay, so we use set notation, okay, with the curl bracket here and we list down all the outcomes in the sample, sample space, all right? Okay. So now let's see next. Okay, an event is a set of basic outcomes, okay? Event, 
is a set of basic outcomes from the sample space. Okay, so that is definition of event. And this event is said to occur if the random experiment gives rise to one of its constituent basic outcomes. Okay, so for example, okay, let's see eh, an example. List a sample space showing all possible outcomes when a die is rolled. Okay, so again, when you roll a die, so you will get this outcome. Right? So this is what we call a sample space. Yeah? We write down in the set notation. Okay, then the basic outcomes are the numbers. So thus, okay, we can declare one event. Okay, so one event is actually the, uh, the event that will give you a subset of the sample space. For example, okay, so we declare one event here, A. Okay, so we declare A as event of getting odd numbers. Okay, so A as event of getting odd numbers. Okay, so if um, you can see here out of these six numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we can, we can, yeah, declare A to be an event of getting odd numbers. All right, so you can see that the elements of A are one, three, and five. Okay. And then, okay, let's see example two. So, list a sample space when two dice are tossed or a die is tossed twice. Okay, so basically these two are the same thing. Huh? Okay, when two dice are tossed or a die is tossed twice, yeah. So, okay, basically the sample space are going to be the pair, okay, the set of ordered pairs, yeah. So, this sample space, okay, is basically set of ordered pairs, huh? set of ordered pairs. Okay, so because the two dice are tossed, so basically these are the outcomes and you will notice that the number of elements in the sample space, okay, is 36. So, okay, now we declare one event. Okay, what is the event? So, A is the event of getting sum of two numbers, 6. Okay, sum of two numbers, 6. So, how can we get, okay, so sum of two means, okay, for the two numbers when we find the sum or in fact total we get six so what how many outcomes do we have okay so we can see here okay a is actually set of ordered pairs okay so how many outcomes do we have so we are going to obtain six uh, sorry five outcomes okay so we are going to obtain five different outcomes here all right so one two three four and five okay because here if you sum the numbers Okay, if you sum the numbers here, 1 and 5, you'll get 6. Okay, here, when you sum 2 and 4, you will get 6 also. And when you sum 3 and 3, you will get 6. Okay, and then when you sum, okay, 4 and 2, you'll get 6 as well. And then 5, 1, you'll get 6. Okay, so we can say here, all right, so the number of elements in set A or number of elements, okay, or number of outcomes in the event of A, uh, five. So there are five outcomes yeah, for the event. Okay, well, okay, we declare the second event. So B is the event of getting sum of two numbers, okay, to be multiple of five. Okay, so okay, B an event, okay, multiple of five. So if we list down the multiple of five, so it's either we have five, 10, 15, 20, and so on, right? Okay, but you see, because the maximum, okay, because when we roll two dice, Okay, when we roll two dice, so the maximum value that we will be getting only this one, right? Six and six, because the maximum number on the side of roll, uh, on the side of a die is six. So, okay, if sum of two numbers, so the maximum numbers of sum we can get is only twelve, yeah? because six plus six is twelve. So, which means we can only get um five or ten here. Yeah? So we can exclude fifteen and twenty because there is no possibility that we will get fifteen and twenty, yeah as the sum of the numbers okay so the maximum is 10 so now okay we can see here 1 plus 4 is 5 4 plus 1 is also 5 2 plus 3 is 5 3 plus 2 is also 5 and then now 5 plus 5 is 10 4 plus 6 is 10 and 6 plus 4 is 10 okay why do we consider this as two different sets okay because you see here 4 and 6 6 and 4 you may assume that they are the same but they are not actually because why okay in this case the 4 here is coming from the first die Okay, so this one is coming from the first die and 6 here is coming from the second die. Okay, while for the second pair here, actually the number 6 here is coming from the first die. Okay, while the second one is coming from the second die. So there is a difference yeah, between these two ordered pairs. Okay, 
even though they consist of the same numbers, 6 and 4, but they are of different combinations, yeah? Okay, so here we have event B, okay, event of getting sum of two numbers multiple of 5. So, altogether, you can see here we have 7 ordered pairs. So, the number of outcomes in the event B is 7. Okay, so that is example of event. Alright, so event again is set of basic outcomes from the sample space. Okay, so first thing first, you need to list down the sample space elements and then you can declare an event based on the outcomes that you have in the sample space. Okay, so now let's see what is the definition of mutually exclusive events. Okay, so two events A and B are called mutually exclusive if there is no intersection between the two events. Or we can say that, okay, uh, in this case, so this is actually Venn diagram. Huh? Okay, I'm sure that you have seen this before. Huh? So this is Venn diagram. So this is Venn diagram. Okay, if, yeah, when we talk about mutually exclusive events, okay, which means no intersection. Or we can say that the two events cannot occur, okay, at the same time. For example, okay, so A, A intersect B is, so this is, Null set, ah. Huh? Null set, or you can use this notation, ah. Huh? You can put the uh, round bracket and without any element inside. So this is empty set. That means we cannot find anything here. Okay, so we can say that two events are mutually exclusive if there is no intersection. Okay, or in other words, okay, two events are mutually exclusive if they do not happen at the same time. Okay, so for example. Okay, example, okay, so you see here, a bag containing four red marbles, two white marbles, and eight black marbles. So what is the probability that a marble picked from the bag at random is either red or white? Okay, so now, okay, we declare the event of taking red marble as the letter R, while the, okay, the event of taking a white marble is represented by the letter W. Okay, so now, because the question says is either red or white. So in statistics, the word all means union. Yeah? Okay, so the word all means union. Okay, so now we need to find the probability of R union W. So this is what we what we call as additional probability formula. So we'll discuss this later. Okay, but basically, okay, how to find the probability. Okay, how to find the probability of this. R union W, so it's actually the probability of R plus probability of W minus probability of R intersect W. And you may see here, why is the zero written here? Because, okay, logically, when we when we have these different marbles in a bag, and, okay, now if you choose one marble, so the possibility of getting red and white marble is zero. Why? Because, you see, the, the marbles are in different colors, right? In different colors. So there is no chance of you getting one marble to be of two different colors. Okay, so there is no possibility that the one particular marble that we obtain is of the red and white color. Okay, so because they are in different colors here. So four red, two white, and eight black. Okay, so the probability of getting red and white is zero. So we, we, can, we can say that the, the two events, R and W, they are mutually exclusive events. Or for example, if I give you... Okay, um, example here, let's say in one class, we have eight boys and, okay, eight boys and eight girls. Okay, or okay, I, I changed the number. Eh? So, let's say we have seven girls. Okay, so the probability of choosing one boy, so the probability of choosing one boy from the class is 8 over 15, right? So, this is probability of choosing a boy. Okay, I write down here as PB. And probability of choosing a girl from the class is... Okay, so probability of choosing a girl from the class is 7 over 15. Okay, and then if I ask you, what is the probability of choosing boy and girl? Okay, so there is no po possibility, right? Okay, it's not possible to choose one particular student and that student is boy and girl. Okay, there is no possibility or the probability is zero. Lah. Okay, so we can say that B and G, so this B and G, the events of choosing a girl, and the event of choosing a boy, they are mutually exclusive events. Why? Because these two events, they cannot occur at the same time. 
Okay, so that is the definition of mutually exclusive events. Huh? So I hope this explains. Okay, so now let's see probability. So the definition of probability, if we have a number of equi-probable events, such as drawing card from a well-shuffled bag, so the probability of particular outcome is defined as this. Okay, so the number of equi-probable favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. Okay, so basically, this is how we find the probability of an event. Okay, so it's basically the number of possible outcomes in A divided by the total number of all possible outcomes in the sample space. So that's why, okay, uh, whenever you need to find probabilities, so the first thing first is you need to, okay, identify the possible outcomes, all possible outcomes, okay, because that is basically our uh, number of elements in the sample space. Okay, because this, the NS will, okay, determine the, determine the, probability that we'll be getting. So again, example just now, okay, we have eight boys and seven girls, right? So in this case, we can say that the number of all possible outcomes or the number of elements in the sample space is basically 15. How do we obtain 15? Okay, by summing this up. Okay, so eight plus seven will give you 15. Okay, so that's why since you have number of elements for the boys, okay, for the event boys is eight. And then number of elements in the event of getting a girl is 7. Uh, so that's why we can obtain the probabilities by dividing the number of possible outcomes in that event, okay, with the number of all possible outcomes. Okay, so that is basically how to find probabilities. Okay, and one thing that you need to know is probability, the value of probabilities must be between, okay, must be between or from 0 to 1 only. Okay, if you are talking about percentage, we know that the, the lowest value of percentage can be 0 and the maximum value of percentage is 100. So the same thing applied to probability. When it comes to probability, the lowest value of probability is 0. Okay, so 0 means okay, the event is impossible event. While the, if you have probability 1, so which means it's a sure event. Okay. Okay, all right. So that is, okay, this is the first concept that you have to understand. Probabilities, the value must be between 0 and 1, okay? Okay, from 0 to 1. Okay, you can get the probability to be 0 if it is an impossible event or you can get the probability of an event to be 1 if it's a sure event. Okay, for example, okay, so for example, you have in one class, okay, in one practicum, okay, you have only um, 7 boys, for example, yeah? You have seven boys. Okay, so this is number of sample space. You have seven boys. Okay. Let's say you have seven boys. So that means the probability of getting a boy. Okay, is one. Why? Because it should, okay, you see, in one particular classroom, there are seven boys, no girls at all. So the probability of getting, okay, the probability of choosing one student to be the boy is an absolute event because you see in that particular classroom, there are only boys. So if you choose one student from that classroom, so we are sure that the student is going to be a boy. Okay. And what does it mean by impossible event? For example, again, using this case, okay, so you see in one classroom consisting of seven boys. So if you try to choose one student and finding the probability that the student is a girl, so we know that probability is zero lah, because for sure the student is a boy. So and we are sure enough that the student is not a girl because we know, okay, when we uh, enter the classroom, we can see only boys. So once you choose one student out of the seven students, which are boys, so the probability of getting a girl is an impossible event, okay? So the probability will be zero, lah, okay? Because uh, again, the event of getting a girl is an impossible event. How can you get a girl from a classroom, okay, full with boys, all right? So that is example, yeah? So that is, okay, what we call as this one. Lah. Okay, it's either sure event or impossible event. Okay, then what about A prime? Okay, so this A prime or A bar is called as the um, complement event. Okay, so again, A prime, A bar. So it's actually probability of that A complement event means A does not happen. Okay. Okay, now let's see example three. Okay, two dice. Two dice are tossed. Find the probability that the sum of two numbers is eight. 
Okay, so again, if two does are tossed, so we know that the number of sample space is going to be 36, right? How can we get the 36? Okay, because yeah, we have the example earlier. So you can list down the example. Uh, so uh, the set of sample space is going to be elements of ordered pairs. Yeah? So first you will have one, one. Okay, and then you will have one, two, so on and so forth. Okay, until lastly you have six and six. So you know that the number of elements in the sample space is 36. Okay, so find the probability that the sum of two numbers is 8. So how to get 8? So it's either 2 plus 6 or 6 plus 2 or 3 plus 5, 5 plus 3 or 4 plus 4. Okay, so now you can see that the number of elements in the event A is 5. Okay, and while the number of elements in the sample space, okay, is 36. Okay, so in order to find the probability, okay, because the question says find the probability eh, that the sum of two numbers is 8. Okay, so the probability is going to be 5 over 36. Yeah, why? Because we used the concept just now. Probability of A is equal to Na divided by Ns. Alright, okay. So now let's see uh, the second example. Okay, find the probability that the sum of two numbers are prime numbers. Okay, so first thing first. Let's list down the prime numbers. So what are prime numbers? So prime numbers are numbers which are only divisible by 1 and itself. So we can see that, okay, so we can have prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, okay, 11, 13 and so on. But we cannot uh, we cannot have the number 13 because again, okay, the, the final ordered pair here is only 6 and 6, right? So if we find the sum here, we can get we can get the maximum sum to be 12. So we exclude the 13. So we can get up to 11. Okay, so first how can we get 2? We can get 2 by adding 1 and 1. And then how can we get 3? It's 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1 here. Alright, and then how can we get 5? So it's either 1 plus 4 or 4 plus 1 or okay, 2 plus 3. Or 3 plus 2. Okay, then how can we get 7? So it's 1 plus 6 or 6 plus 1 or 2 plus 5 or 5 plus 2 and 3, 4 and 4, 3. Okay, then lastly, how can we get 11? Okay, so the last prime number here is either 5 plus 6 or 6 plus 5. So you can see here there are how many pairs? So there are 15 pairs all together. Okay, for the event B. Lah. So again, what is event B? Event B is the event of getting sum of two numbers to be prime numbers. Okay, so you can see that the number of elements in the event B is 15. And we know that the number of elements in the sample space is 36. So the probability is 15 over 36. And we simplify it. All right, okay. Then we will get 5 over 12. So that is the probability of event B. Okay, then... What, let's see next example. Okay, is there any question in the live chat? Okay, alright. So, my here. Okay, she asked, Madam, memang wajib kena list down. Eh, okay, so it is uh, optional actually. It is optional, okay, untuk senaraikan. If the question says, or if the question requests for the sample space to be listed down, then it is compulsory. But if you, okay, if the question doesn't require you to list down, then it is optional. Okay, so jawapannya tak wajib sekiranya soalan tak minta. Tapi kalau soalan minta, ya wajib untuk list down. Okay, so I hope, okay, it clear, ah, it is clear. Okay, Sam kata morning, minum kopi dulu. Alright, dah ada minum kopi dah. Said Izudin, who is this Said Izudin? Ke? Ada kawan siapa-siapa ke? Morning side. Okay, yeah. My, okay. Thank you, madam. Alright. My pleasure. Okay, so now let's continue. Eh? Okay, so example four. Three unbiased coins. Okay, what does it mean by unbiased? Unbiased means, okay, the coin is evenly, evenly weighted. For example, uh, the coins that you, you have in your pocket or in your wallet or in your purse lah. Okay, so the coin that we have, okay, 
by prepared by bank negara is unbiased why because if you flip the coin the coins are evenly weighted so that means the probability of getting a head or a tail are one over two okay so that is unbiased when it comes to bias for example if you have bias coin if you have bias coin okay so we we okay the probability of getting head or tail will be different for example if the coin is biased so we can see that um, probability of getting a head may be greater than probability of getting a tail or vice versa okay so they are not equal anymore okay so public when we have probably uh, a bias coin again probability of getting head is not equal to probability of getting a tail okay they are not equal anymore okay that is when you have bias coin occasionally in the question uh, the question will declare whether the coin is biased or not okay so yeah let's say here we are given three unbiased coins that means we know that probability of getting a head is half and probability of getting a tail is half also lah. okay so find the probability of getting exactly two heads okay now let's see yeah uh, so this is the tree diagram yeah so we use here so these are all so we call this as tree diagram okay i'm sure you have seen this before yeah okay so this is tree diagram okay so if you have um okay three unbiased coin okay so we toss simultaneously okay so which means it's also equivalent to um tossing one coin three times basically okay so we can assume that okay three unbiased coin tossed simultaneously is also equivalent to one coin to be tossed three times okay so find the probability of getting exactly two hits okay so getting exactly two hits means all right so we do have okay so here uh, this is the event of the first toss and then this is the event of second toss and this is the event of third toss all right so we can see here um first okay for the first toss so this is the event of getting hit and this is the event of getting tail so we can write down the probability here is half or here also half okay and then second one second toss so here is either head or tail so also the probability is half half here okay after you get tail the first one and then second coin you get either head or tail so it's also half and then this is half okay then third toss here also head or tail so we put half and this is half also then okay getting first head second tail and also here head tail so you have half and half and then this one because it's stated here right the coin is unbiased so that's why the probabilities are equal eh? equal to each other so now here is either head or tail so half and here also half all right okay so now the question says find the probability of getting exactly two heads so exactly two heads okay so it's either you get head head tail or head tail head or tail head head exactly two heads all right so we cannot we cannot get less than two or cannot we cannot get more than two okay so it's either this hit hit tail or hill hit tail hit or tail hit hit yeah okay so how we can get this so you can see here so one we have one two three four five six seven eight so out of these eight outcomes okay so out of eight outcomes okay so the number of elements in the sample space is eight so how can we get hht so you can see hht is here and then we have hth is also here and then we have exactly two heads huh? so this one not exactly two heads this one also not exactly two heads because these are three heads this one only one head okay this one is two heads okay while well, this one only one head one head and here no head at all so here we can see that there are three three sets yeah, or three okay three outcomes okay out of eight so the probability of the getting two hits is equal to three over eight okay because you can see here there are three outcomes out of eight okay which we can see exactly two h or two hits 
Alright, so that's that's why the probability is 3 over 8. Okay, now let's see next question. At least 2 heads. So now when at least 2 heads, the word at least means greater or equal to 2. Okay, sekurang-kurangnya. Maksudnya paling kurang 2. Tak boleh kurang lagi daripada 2. Alright, so paling kurang 2. So which means we can get either 2 heads or 3 heads. Okay, so let's see. Eh? Out of these 8 outcomes, so at least 2 heads. So we consider this one. Okay, because all 3 heads. This one also, we consider this. We consider this. Alright, this one we reject. Okay, because it doesn't satisfy the, the word at least two hits. This one, yeah, we accept. And then this one also we reject because again, it says at least two hits, but this one only one hit. This one also we reject. And this one also we reject because no hits at all. So now, all together we have four, right? So four outcomes. So the probability here is four over eight. So the answer is one over two. Okay, so that is the how to find probability of event of getting at least two hits. Alright, okay, then next one, C. At most, one hit. At most, one hit means, okay, it has to be one only. It cannot be more than that, at most. Huh? So, which means it has to be less equal one. So, it's either you have one hit or no hit at all. Okay, Um. yeah, this topic, we play with words, yeah? So, you need to really understand what does it mean, yeah, with the, the, the questions. So, first, you need to understand, okay, you need to understand the, okay, the question before you can answer it. Alright, so now, we play around with this word. So, at most, one hit. So, it's either one hit or no hit at all. So, let's look for one hit. So, this one, we reject because three hits. This one, also, we reject two hits. This one, two hits also. This one, okay, one hit. We accept. And then this one, two hits. And then one hit here, we accept. This one also, one hit, we accept. And then here, no hit at all, right? So at most, so it can be less equal one. So it's either one hit or no hit at all. So here, we accept this one. Okay, so you can see here for the purple one, so there are four outcomes. All right, so we can see that, the okay? C be the event of getting at most one hit. So it's either all tail or one hit here. Okay, so you can see that the probability is 4 over 8, which is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, so. Okay, ada soalan lagi. Mai tanya, bias coin tu macam dadu piramli. Okay, coin tu duit shilling eh. Kalau dadu tu yang die lah. Okay, maksudnya mungkin Mai masukkan bias uh, die. Okay, bias die. Macam dadu piramli. Dadu piramli yang macam mana eh? Haris pernah tengok tak cerita uh, piramli? Bias die. Ada ke? Hmm, tak ingat lah. Tak, tak ingat. Zahid pun ada. Ada tengok cerita piramli? Saya tak ada eh? Okay, korang Gen Z yang tak tengok cerita Piramli, okay. Uh, mungkin lah, mungkin yang dadu Piramli ni maksudnya setiap kali dia, uh, okay, dia roll the die, mungkin dia akan dapat satu nombor yang sama ke? Macam tu ke, Mai? Dia akan dapat selalu dapat nombor 6. I'm not sure. Tapi kalau, okay, when the probability of getting one outcome is more than the other, so we can say that the die is biased. Okay, because, um, okay, uh, let's see here. Semua dua. Oh. Semua dua. Maksudnya, dia tak ada nombor satu ataupun tiga, empat, lima, enam lah. Okay. Kalau tengok Azari komen kat sini. Semua dua. Maksudnya, dadu dia semua, uh, semua dia punya side. Okay. The values are all twos. Uh, so, we can call the die as bias lah. Yeah. It is a bias die. Okay. That means the uh, probability of getting two is absolute lah. Okay. Maksudnya tak ada dah nombor lain. So, probability of getting 1 is 0. Probability of getting 3 is also 0. Probability of getting 4, 5 and 6 also 0 lah. Because it's an absolute event. Okay, yang nilai 2 ni adalah absolute event. Okay, because here Azharil says, semua 2. Nilai dia semua 2 kat dadu tu. 
Maksudnya, baling-baling akan dapat dua. Baling-baling dapat dua. So that means probability of getting a two is an absolute event. So probability of getting two is one. Okay, because just now we discussed, right, probability the maximum value is one. Okay, so that is, okay, bias die. Alright, okay, then Kai asked here, Madam, kalau jawapan probability tu bagi dalam decimals, boleh juga ke? Okay, yes, boleh. So that means, uh, for example, here after we get the value 1 over 2, okay, so you can give the value to be 0 0.5, no problem. Because again, uh, we we refer the general instructions to candidate, right? Okay, the numerical answers may be given in the form of pi, e, cert, fractions, or up to three significant figures lah. So if you need to give the answer in decimal, yes, you may do so, okay? But please give correct to three significant figures. Ya, yeah, okay. Hanan kata Ali Baba Bujang Lapo, okay? Okay, uh, so dalam cerita tu lah kot. Alright, so macam tu lah. Okay, so uh, that is how you can see uh, the application of maths lah. So maksudnya uh, Piramli uh, Bujang Lapo tu dia menipu lah kan. Baling dah dua, semua-semua dapat dua. Baling dapat dua, baling dapat dua. So that means the probability of getting a two, okay, is one lah. Okay, because it's an absolute event. Alright, okay. So let's continue. Okay, so now, um, yeah, example five. Okay, there are 100 from six students. Okay, 100, yeah, so we see here and S is 100. Of whom 20 are studying biology. Okay, 15, okay, so 20 studying biology. So the keyword here, 20 for biology. And then 15 are studying chemistry. And eight are studying both biology and chemistry. So find the probability that a student chosen at random studies both biology and chemistry. Okay, now you see that this is Venn diagram, yeah. So in in order to draw the Venn diagram, okay, because you see here in this case, in this particular question, there are two different events. You can see clearly. Okay, one event is the event of student studying biology and the second event of the event of student studying chemistry. So you can declare the B here for the event of student studying biology and the event C here is for the students studying chemistry. Okay, the tip is whenever you need to fill in the Venn diagram, the first value that you have to key in or you have to fill in is the intersection. This one is the most important part that has to be filled in first. So this is the most important part. Okay, so based on the question, we know that there are eight students studying both. So first, we put the value of eight. Why? Okay, why? Because you see here, in this question, okay, we know that there are 100 from 6, which means this is an S. Okay, we know an S is equal to 100. Okay, and also here biology, we have N, B, the number of students taking biology is 20. Okay, but you cannot write 20 in the Venn diagram because in this, okay, out of these 20 students, there are some of them who are studying both biology and chemistry. Okay, so out of these 20, there are 8 of them studying both. Okay, so that is why... First thing first, you need to fill in with the value of intersection first. Then only you subtract. Okay, so here you see 20 minus 8 will give you 12. Uh, so now you can put the 12 here. You cannot simply put 20 because the 20 here is including the students who study both. So that's why, yeah. first thing first, you need to put the value of the intersection and then we put the rest by subtracting. Uh. Okay, and not only that, okay, for chemistry as well. So, we know that 15 are studying chemistry. So, we can see that NC is equal to 15. But again, this 15, they are including the students who study both. Alright, so that's why after you put the 8 here, then 15 subtract 8 will give you 7. So, now you put the value 7 inside the, the circle here. Okay, so this is the circle of C lah. Okay, and how do we get this 73? So 100 minus 12 minus 8 minus 7 will give you 73. So we know that this 73 are students 
who neither study maths, eh, sorry, neither study biology nor chemistry. That means they don't study both. Okay, they don't study biology, they don't study chemistry. Okay. All right, so now the question says, uh, find the probability that the student, okay, student, a student chosen at random, okay, studies both biology and chemistry. So when it comes to both, so we look at the intersection here. Lah. So the intersection is 8, right? So 8 out of 100 students altogether. So 8 out of 100 will give you 2 over 25. So if you press calculator, you can also give the value in decimal. Okay, then... Uh, the second example, find the probability that a student chosen at random studies either, either biology or chemistry. So either means, okay, it's either biology or chemistry. So when we talk about the union, so it is the whole thing here. So this is the region where, okay, the, the event of B union C, okay, so we take all here. Okay, B union C, we take all. So we have the values here. So you just add two, 12 plus 8 plus 7 divided by the number of sample space, which is 100. So we get 27 over 100. Or if you want to give the answer in decimal, so it will be 0 0.27. Okay. Okay, so now let's uh, recall, yeah? Okay, whenever you come across the letters, okay? So let's say you have A. So A is event of A happens. All right, and if you have A prime or A bar, a bar, eh? so that is the event of A does not happen. It's the complement event of the previous one. Okay, and then for the B, which means B happens, B prime or B bar, okay, which means B does not happen. It's the complement event. Okay, then A intersect B means A and B happen simultaneously. And then if you have A intersect B prime, which means A happens, but B does not happen. Okay, which means only A happens. Then A prime intersect B or, okay, you can also use A bar, A bar intersect B. This one also you can use, okay, A intersect B bar. So if you have A bar intersect B means B happens but A does not happen, okay, which means only B happens, okay. Okay, I, I, I hope that you don't get confused huh, with these wordings. Okay, so you try to digest each and every here, each and every sentence or each and every word here. Okay, and then what about A union B? So if you have A union B means A happens or B happens or both happen. Okay, we can say that at least one happens. Okay, at least means, um, at least one happens means it's either A happens or B happens or both. Okay. And then if you have A prime intersect B prime or if you have A bar intersect B bar. So which means both A and B do not happen. Okay. And then if you have A intersect B bar union with, okay, A bar intersect B. So only one happens. It's either A only or B only but not both. Okay. So this can all be proven using Venn diagram. Yeah? Okay, so now let's see yeah, the next linear outcome that we're going to accomplish. Okay, we are going to find probability of an event and we're going to find the probabilities of the intersection and union of two events. Okay, so this is very important uh, formula that you need to know. Okay, and this formula will be given in exam. So no worries. Okay, so let's go through here. Okay, additional probability rules. Yeah, so this is the formula that we will be applying most of the time. Okay, so please digest this very carefully. Yeah? So probability of two events, A or B occurring, can be calculated using additional probability rules. Okay, so this is the formula. Okay, so probability of getting A or B or both, okay, or denoted by A union B. So the formula is PA plus PB minus A intersect B. Okay, so this is additional probability rule. Yeah? So this is the formula. Alright, so the definition, the complement of an event A is denoted by A bar or A prime. Yeah? So P A bar is equal to 1 minus P A. Okay, and we do have D Morgan's rule. 
saying that if you have A prime union with B prime, this is equal to probability of A intersect B prime, okay? So, okay, the idea is when you need to take the prime out, you see here, originally the A and the prime here are both in uh, for A and B, right? Okay, but then when, you, when we factorize the prime out or we, when we take, take out the prime, you will notice that the union here will be changed to intersection. Okay, or this can be proven using the, okay, the Venn's diagram. Or let's say here, for the second De Morgan's rule, if you have A prime intersect B prime, so if you want to take the prime out here, you will notice that the intersection has now become union. So that is what, okay, De Morgan's rule is all about. Okay, so for example, eh, a prime union B prime. Okay, so let's draw a Venn diagram. So this is your A. This is your B. Okay, A prime. A prime means not A. Not A. Okay, then I take B prime, eh? union B prime. So union B prime means, okay, not B. Not B. Everything excluding the B. So when we talk about union, so again, when we talk about union, we consider everything, right? Okay, so again, uh, we discussed this union and intersection in first topic last semester. So when we talk about union of two sets, we take all, right? So you can see that, okay, in the Venn diagram, you can see that uh, we take all with the red and the green ink. So you can see that, okay, everything is labeled except for the middle one, right? So this is what we, okay, what we call as the set of A intersect B. So you can see that this is everything except for this session, okay, or except for this region. So that's why we can say that A prime, union B prime is equal to A intersect B prime. Okay, so this can be proven using Venn diagram. Or, okay, what about the second De Morgan's rule? Okay, so second De Morgan's rule. So, for example, here, if you have A prime, okay, again, I draw the Venn diagram. So, here you have A, here you have B. Okay, so again, A prime is basically everything except the A. Okay, everything except the A. And then, okay, what about B prime? So, everything except the B. Okay, so everything except the B. And, okay, now when we talk about the intersection of both, so basically you can find the intersection of the red and the green. They only exist outside these two circles. Okay, I hope you can see this. Huh? So, okay, they exist outside these two circles, which means outside the A union B region so that's why a prime intersect b prime is equal to a union b prime so that is the morgan's rule nah? so we have proven this using venn diagram nah? okay or if you don't want to prove this okay so basically you just remember this nah? if you want to take the prime out so you just change the the operation here it should be okay from union you change it to intersection or here from intersection you change it to Union, huh? So that is basically how to apply the De Morgan's rule. Okay, and then we do have this other useful formula. Okay, other useful formula means if you have A intersect B prime, this is equal to PA minus PA intersect B. Okay, how can we see this? Okay, I'm going to get rid of this Venn diagram. Okay, for the De Morgan's rule just now. So you see, where is this region located? A intersect B prime. Okay, where is this region located? Okay, so if we draw the Venn diagram once again, so this is A, this is B. So you can see that A intersect B prime, yeah? so A, so this is A, intersect B prime. So B prime is basically everything except B, right? You can see that everything here except the B. Okay, so you can see that the intersection between these two is only this region. Okay, it's only this region. 
that is the intersection of these two, okay? A intersect B prime, okay? Which means, okay, you can obtain PA and then you just minus with this intersection, then you will obtain the A intersect B prime. And the same thing also applied to the second other formula here. If you have A prime intersect B, so you will get PB minus PA intersect B. Okay, so in, yeah, I just need to remind you that the formula that will be given in exam is only this one. Eh? D Morgan's and other formula here not given in exam. Okay, so you have to know this formula. Okay, so that you will be able to apply this correctly. Okay, so now let's see example. We are given P, A and B are two events. Okay, where the formula, okay, probability of event A is given probability of event B is given and probability of A intersect B is also given. So the question says find A union B. Okay, so we cannot find A union B um, from this directly. So which means we need to use the formula. So this is, okay, additional probability formula. Lah, okay, so how to find A union B, probability of A union B. So this is the application of additional probability formula. Lah. So, additional probability formula. Okay, so we have P A union B equals P A plus P B minus P A intersect B. So, all of these are given in the question. So, you just substitute and you will get the answer. Okay, and then for the P, okay, for the second question here, find P A intersect B prime. Okay, so we can use, we can apply this formula. Okay, um, yeah, and I think this is labeled. Okay, this is supposed to be C and this is supposed to be A, uh, B. Okay, so the B part is to find P A intersect B prime. So we can apply this other formula. We can apply this other formula. So we can see that P A intersect B prime is equal to P A minus P A intersect B. So because we already... Okay, we are already given the PA and also PA intersect B. So, you just substitute into the formula and this is what we will get. And then, okay, so how to get this? PA prime union B prime. Okay, so what do we do is we can apply the De Morgan's law. So, the De Morgan's law says if you want to take the prime out, okay, so if you want to take the prime out, so you see here originally the prime, is inside the bracket. If you want to take the uh, prime out of the bracket, what you need to do is you change the symbol here. From union, it will be intersection. Okay, so we see that PA prime, union B prime, is equal to PA intersect B prime. And we know that PA intersect B prime is basically the complement event of A intersect B. So, PA intersect B prime is equal to 1 minus PA intersect B. Okay, just like, yeah, how can we obtain from here to here? Just like this, we use the complement event formula. So, PA prime is equal to 1 minus PA, while you have PB prime is equal to 1 minus PB. So, if you have P, A intersect B prime. So, this is equal to 1 minus P, A intersect B. Okay, because we are given PA intersect B, which is 1 over 6, so you can just substitute the value here. So, 1 minus 1 over 6 will give you 5 over 6. Okay, and then for the D part, how to find PA prime intersect B prime? Again, we can apply the De Morgan's law, okay? So, the De Morgan's law says that, okay, if you have the prime inside the bracket and you need to take out the prime, so you take out the prime out, Okay, you take the prime out. So, you need to change the symbol here. From intersection here, you change to union. And we see that the this symbol, okay, or A union B prime is basically the complement event of A union B, right? So, the, the same thing here. We use the complement event theory. So, we have A union B prime is equal to 1 minus probability of A union B. So, where can we obtain this? So, you notice that we have found it earlier in the A part. Okay, so the value is 13 over 18. So, to find the complement event of A union B, so we just put 1 minus of probability A union B. So, this is the answer that we will get. 
Okay, so now let's see if we have any question in the live chat. Okay, no question so far. All right, what about our guests here? Do we have any question from these two? Okay, Zahid dengan Haris ada soalan nak tanya ke? No, Haris? Tak ada, Madam. Haris tak ada soalan. Okay. Okay, so now let's continue. Okay, so example two. An integer is selected randomly. Okay, from a set of integers. So you see here there are 12 all together, right? So we can say that an S is equal to 12. Find the probability that the integer is an even number or divisible by 3. So now you see that there are two events here. And the relation between these two is or. So again, in statistics, whenever you come across the word or, it means union. So now we, ne we need to declare the events first, yeah? So we declare event A as the event of getting even number. While event B is the event of getting a number which is divisible by 3. Okay, so first we need to list down. Okay, so out of these 12, okay, what are the even numbers? So you can see that we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So they are all together 6 numbers. And then when it comes to the number that is divisible by 3, so we can see that, okay, divisible by 3, we can see that the numbers are 3, 6, 9, and 12. So there are four numbers all together, okay? So now the question says, find the probability that the integer is an even number or divisible by 3. So when it comes to this word or, which means union. So how to find A union B? So what do we need to do? Again, we need to apply. Additional probability formula, okay? So this is additional probability formula. Okay, whereby here, you have PA equals 6 over 12, yeah? Because you see here, out of 6, okay? Here, 6 over 12. And then probability of B, we have all together 4 numbers, okay? Divided by 12, so 4 over 12. Okay, now when it comes to A intercept B, okay, so that's why it is important to list down the elements because, okay, from these two, you can see clearly that the intersections, yeah, which numbers appears twice in this case, okay? So we see that here, 6, you can see that here, in this case, 6 appears in both A and B, right? And then 12 is also, okay, in both sets, all right? So you can see that intersection between A and B, out of this, yeah, so we can have two numbers out of 12, yeah, 6 and 12. So the two here are actually coming from 6 and 12. Huh? Okay, so out of 12, we do have two numbers which appear in both sets A and B. So that's why you see here, okay, probability of A intercept B is 2 over 12, okay, because of these two numbers, yeah, 6 and 12. Okay, so minus with the intersection, so we get the value to be 2 over 3. Okay, and now, for the B part, find the probability that the integer is an even number n. Okay, now it says n. So, which means intersection. And not only that, okay, the question says is not divisible. So, if we declare event B as the event of choosing numbers divisible by 3, so if the number is not divisible by 3, so we can say that this is actually B prime, yeah? Not divisible by 3, B prime. So now the question asks you to find PA intersect B prime. And how can we use, okay, and how can we find this? So we can use other formula that we discussed earlier. Eh? Okay, we can use other formula. So probability of A intersect B prime is equal to PA minus PA intersect B. So you have got PA here, 6 over 12 minus with A intersect B, 2 over 12, and you will get this answer. Okay, and now find probability that the integer is not an even number, not an even number. So, which means we know that this is A prime. And the word N means intersection and not divisible by 3. So, we know that this is B prime. Yeah? It's complement event of B. 
So now the question says find a prime intersect b prime. So how do we do how do we do this? So we need okay, we are going to apply D Morgan's formula. So this one we can get from D Morgan's rule. Okay, you can see that here, okay, both prime are in the bracket. So once we take the prime out, so the operation here from intersection, it will change to union. So how to find PA union B? So it's basically complement event. Okay, how to find PA union B prime, yeah? Okay, so it's basically complement of A union B. Yeah? So we have 1 minus PA union B. So PA union B we have obtained earlier, which is 2 over 3. So you just subtract with 1. So you will get 1 over 3. Okay, so this is basically how we apply the D Morgan's rule and how we apply other formula to help us to solve the problems. Okay, so now let's see here. Okay, example three. Records show that 80% of Malaysia citizens are smokers. You see 80% are quite a lot. Okay, 80% of Malaysian citizens are smokers. Okay, so we can declare here lah. So event S for smokers. Okay, how many of my students here are smoking? Si tak mengaku kan? Okay, ada ke yang smoking di dalam ni? Okay, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure about the numbers. Okay, but if you do, I hope we can um, make an attempt to stop now because it's not good for your health. All right. Okay, itu pesanan penaja eh. Pesanan himat masyarakat. Okay, now, okay, we declare the event as for smokers. And then 70%, 17% of the citizen have lung cancer. Okay, so we declare the event of lung cancer is C eh. Okay. With 13% who are smokers and have lung cancer. So you see that here N, yeah, the word, the keyword here is N. So basically the, the info that we have here, 13%, smokers and have lung cancer. So that, okay, in this topic, we are not, we will not be given the information directly. So you need to identify the keywords and the correct symbols, okay, so that we will be able to solve the question correctly. Okay, so in this case, Okay, uh, from the first statement, 80% of Malaysian citizens are smokers. So from here, you can get the probability. Uh, so the probability of event S is 0 0.8. Okay, that is coming from the first statement. Okay, then second statement, 17% have lung cancer. So probability of lung cancer, okay, so probability that the person is a lung cancer patient is 0 0.17, yeah, based on this 17%. Okay, then... We are given 13% smokers and have lung cancer. So we can say that, okay, 0 0.13 is the probability of S intersect C. Okay, so now what does the question want us to find? So the question says, find the probability that the person is a smoker or, okay, so now the keyword here is or. So, okay, smoker, we denote S just now, right? So the question says, find the probability that, okay, the person is smoker or have lung cancer. So now the idea is, the question asks you to find the probability of S union C. So how can we obtain the probability of S union C? So this is where we need to use the additional probability formula. Okay, so the additional probability formula says that if you have P A union B, it's equal to P A plus P B minus P A intersect B. Okay, actually this additional probability formula can be proven using Venn diagram yeah, in order to understand this clearly. Okay, again I write down uh, the additional probability formula A union B is equal to P A plus P B minus P A intersect B. Okay, how can we get this? Okay, because we know A union B is basically this region. Okay, I'm going to use highlighter here. A union B is basically this region. Ah. So how can we get this? Okay, so I'm going to draw one more Venn diagram. Okay, so this is A. 
and this is B. Okay, how can we get the highlighted region? Yeah? Okay, so PA, so I'm going to use right marker, uh, right pen here, PA, K plus PB. So here plus PB, I'm going to use blue pen here, plus PB. Okay, so if you can see here, if we add A and B, PA and PB, you will notice that this region appears twice, right? And we don't want the region to appear twice because, okay, A union B is basically the whole thing here, okay, with this region appears only once. So that's why we subtract with A intercept B so that the region is only appears, okay, is only, um, okay, getting... Yeah, it only appears once in this case, yeah. How do we get the highlighted region? Okay, how do we get this highlighted region? Okay, so it's PA, PA, okay, plus with PB. And because after we add PA and PB, so you can see that the region here appears two times. And we don't want that to happen, okay? Okay, we don't want uh, the, the values to, to be added two times, okay? So, we subtract with one of them. So, that's why the additional probability formula is, yeah, this is how we derive the additional probability formula. Lah. So, basically, A union B is equal to PA plus PB minus PA intercept B. Okay? Alright, so now because we have got the three values, so we just substitute into the formula and this is the answer that we will obtain. Yeah? Okay? Okay, now let's see... Here, okay, not only that, okay, uh, not only Venn diagram, we can also use table. Eh? So, sometimes information is also given in table form. The value of probability is defined based on the information. So, for example, A, B, C, D are four events that can be written in the table below. So, that is how we, we obtain this table. Eh? Okay, imagine here we have two events here, A and B. Here we have events C and D. Okay, so the table here, okay, if you see this region, so this is basically the intersection between A and C, right? So this is probability of A intersect C. While this region is the intersection of B and C. So that's why this, we fill in with the probability of B intersect C, so on and so forth, huh? okay, until we have this. Okay, and you, you see that this, uh, the probability of, okay, sample is 1. So, the total probability must be 1. Okay, or when we talk about the number of sample space, so this will give you the total of number of sample space elements. Okay, so now let's see how to use this table. Okay, we, we call this table as table of outcomes. Table of outcomes. Or sometimes you call it as contingency table. Okay, you may come across this term, lah, contingency table. Okay, so uh, let's see example four. Okay, a survey is conducted on a group of workers comprising production operators, administrative officers, and security guards. The survey is to determine the total working hours in a week. Okay, so one of the workers is randomly selected based on the information provided. Okay, so now we need to give, um, we need to give the events here. Okay, we need to donate, um, we need to, yeah, sorry, we need to denote these events in letters. Okay, so that it will be easier for us to identify. Eh? Okay, so, for, okay, productive operator. So you can uh, put letter O. Okay, to declare this event, administrative officer, you can uh, put the letter A to denote administrative officer. Security guard, you just put letter S. Lah. Okay, now about the working hours, so you can put X, Y, Z. Okay, but the thing is, you, okay, please choose letter, okay, please choose distinct letters lah, to declare all of these events. Okay, so that you don't get confused. No? So, for example, if you have chosen administrative officer to be the event, okay, to be letter A, so please don't choose the A for this event anymore huh? or else you will get confused. Okay, so now we know that the letter O here will represent the event of getting production of operator. A is the event of choosing administrative officer while the event, okay, the letter S here is, okay, the event of choosing 
security guard. Alright, so now uh, find the probability that the workers being a production operator. So the question says find PO. Find PO. Huh? So you have here P. So this is O. Okay, so PO means you total up, yeah, regardless of the working hours. So regardless of these working hours, we just total up all these numbers and you will see that we have 196. Okay, and yeah, you not only that, you total this and you total these three, you will get number of the NS, okay, number of elements in the sample space, which you will find it to be 270. Okay, so now the question says, find the probability that the worker being a production officer, a uh, production operator. So the question asks for PO. So, in, okay, so PO is equal to NO divided by NS. Nah? Okay, using the probability concept just now. So PO is equal to NO divided by NS. So we know NO is 196. Okay, the total of production operator regardless of their working hours. So 196 divided by 270, yeah, the total of staff in, okay, in the, in that particular work, workplace. Huh? So we have 196 over 270, which is 98 over 135. Okay, so this is the probability. You can give the value in fraction or you can also give the value in decimal. Okay, now B, find the probability that the workers who work between 50 to 70 hours Okay, because we have declared this event just now, 50 to 70 hours is the event for Y, right? So the question says, find PY. Okay, now, the question only says, find the workers who work between the, okay, 50 to 70 hours, regardless of their position, right? So we don't, okay, we don't really bother what, okay, they work as. Okay, it's either production operator or administrative officer or security guard as long as they work from 50 to 70 hours. So now we just concerned about this. So we total up everything here. You will see that the value is 70. Okay, so regardless of their position, we want to find the probability of the staff works from 50 to 70 hours. So this is basically, okay, we need to find probability of X. Okay, so again, probability of X is an X over an S. Okay, and yeah, I think the security guard, we declare as G. Yeah. Okay, because why? Because we have used the S here to represent sample space. So, better I put the G yeah, for the security guard. Okay, because um in this topic, capital S will always represent the sample space. So, just not to get confused. Okay, sample space. Okay, just for you not to get confused. All right. Um, so we use letter S to represent sample space. So for any other event, we don't use the letter S. Yeah. So here I change the S to G. Okay, to represent security guard. All right. So we have N X here. So you see for uh, sorry, not N X. It's N Y. Yeah. Because Y here. Yeah. For fifty to seventy hours. So this is supposed to be P Y. Okay. So this is also changed to N Y. Okay, so now NY is 70 divided by 270. So you will get the probability to be 7 over 27. Okay, then for the C part, okay, find the probability that the workers being an administrative officer. So please bear in mind, administrative officer, we declare as A just now. Okay, the worker being an administrative officer, N. Okay, so now the keyword here is N. So which means A intersect. Working greater than 70 hours. So, greater than 70 hours, we declare as Z, right? So, the question says, find A intersect Z. So, okay, again, so this is A intersect Z. Yeah? So, so, find the probability of A intersect Z. Okay, so what is the purpose of declaring the event? Or what is the purpose of um, giving letters? to denote the event so that you won't have to write down this sentence anymore lah. Okay, uh, so maksudnya tak payah dah nak tulis panjang, panjang So dalam exam, contohlah, awak dapat soalan macam ni. Okay, so soalan minta what is the probability of the workers being an administrative officer and working greater than 70 hours. So in your working solution, you don't really have to copy this one anymore because you have denoted the letters. So terus je buat P, A, intersect Z. 
Okay, so that is actually the purpose of using letters. Uh, so we don't have to write all the, the long sentences anymore. Lah. Okay, so A intersects Z. So you can see clearly from the table. So this is our A. Okay, and this is our Z. So you can find that where A intersects Z. Eh? So A intersects Z is at this. So you can see, so it's 8 over 270. Lah. Okay, because again, probability of A intersect Z is when N A intersect Z divided by N S. Okay, so the denominator will always be the N S, you know, 270. So 8 over 270 will give you 4 over 135. Okay, and then here, okay, what is the probability that the workers being security guard? So this is the event of G. And then working less than 40 hours. So working less. So okay, even though there is no N word, because we know that okay, the person is a security guard and okay, he works less than 40 hours. So based on this, so this is actually the event of X. So we just need to find G intersect X. All right. So G intersect X. So from the table, you can see that G intersect X at this region. So we know that the answer is going to be 4 over 270. So this is probability of G intersect X. Okay. So 4 over 270 and you give the answer in the simplest form. 2 over 135. Okay. And last example for today. Huh? So this is probability involving combination and permutation. So, okay. This is what we discussed in topic 7 yeah combination okay combination and permutation so how can we find probability okay so again we use the concept of probability just now so pa is equal to na divided by ns so first thing first what you need to obtain is the ns first you work on the number of total outcomes yeah number of total possible outcomes and then you work on that particular event lah. Okay, depends on the question. So this is the second thing that you need to find. Okay, so first thing first, obtain the number of total possible outcomes. All right, so now example five. Four letters are chosen randomly. Okay, four letters are chosen randomly from the word computer. So you see out of this computer, how many letters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have n equals 8. Sorry, n equals 8. Okay, and out of this 8, we need to choose 4. Okay, we need to choose 4. Okay, find the probability that all 4 letters chosen are consonant. Okay, out of this 8, okay, let's identify how many consonants, how many vowels. Yeah? So, okay, C, M, P. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are 5 consonants and 3 vowels. Yeah? Vowels are O, E, O, U and E. So, 3 vowels. Okay, again, out of these 8 letters, we have 5 consonants and 3 vowels. Okay, now because we need to choose 4, the question says how many all the 4 letters chosen are consonant. So, okay, we declare, we declare the event A here to be the event of four letters chosen are consonant. So since we have five consonants altogether, and because the question says all four must be consonant, so out of these five, we choose four. So, okay, for the NA, so from the event A, so NA is going to be 5C4, which is equal to five. Okay, what about the NS, number of total possible outcome? So the NS in this case is considered as the number of ways of choosing four letters out of 8 without any condition. So that's why you can see here the NS here is 8C4 because out of 8, we simply choose 4 without any condition. So the NS is going to be 70. So now when it comes to probability, so again, we recall the probability. Probability of A is equal to number of elements in event A divided by number of total elements, yeah? In the sample space. So we have Na over Ns, 5 over 70, which is equal to 1 over 14. Okay. Kenapa tiba-tiba akhir kata dosa tu? Siapakah yang berdosa itu? 
Okay, Azaria. Tak ada soalan. Okay, so, okay, now let's finish ah This last example. Okay, then uh, for the B. Okay, uh, so please bear in mind our NS, yeah. Our NS is, okay, from eight letters, we choose four. So, in this case, there are 70, 70 ways of doing it. Ah. Okay, now for the event B, the letter C must be chosen. Okay, so please bear in mind, uh, we need to choose four, right? Okay, out of these eight, we need to choose four. Okay, since the letter C must be chosen, so, okay, we choose the letter C. So, after we have chosen letter C, so which means we just need to choose three more, okay, because altogether we need to choose four. So, after we have chosen C as the first letter or as one of the letters in the combination, so we just need to choose three more. Okay, because we have chosen C just now, so out of eight, we are left with seven options. So, out of seven, we choose three. Okay, so this is 35 number of ways. Huh? Okay, and I need to remind you, this is about combination problem. Huh? It's not uh, about permutation because we don't bother to arrange the letters, yeah? Because the keyword here, chosen randomly. Okay, it's not about um, arranging the letters. Okay, we just concern, uh, okay, on how to choose the number of ways to choose only. Okay, so now we declare the event B to be the event that letter C is chosen. So, okay, 1C1 is for the letter C. Okay, so out of 1, we choose 1. And then because we need to choose 4 altogether, so we have chosen 1, so we just need to choose 3 more. And after we have chosen 1, we are left with 7 options. So out of C, sorry, out of 7, we choose 3. So 1C1 times 7C3 will give you 35. So please bear in mind, and as in this case, is still 70. So the probability of event B is NB over NS, which is equal to half. Okay. And then, okay, last one, the last event, C. Okay, so C is the event of choosing letters M and P simultaneously. So again, okay, out of this eight, okay, out of eight, we need to choose four. Okay, we choose four. Okay, because the question says M and P simultaneously, so, okay, we choose the M and P, okay, because the question says, okay, we need to choose the letters M and P, okay, because here, letters M and P must be chosen. So, which means, okay, out of these two, we choose two. Okay, because altogether we have eight, so after we have chosen two, we are left with six options. And after we have chosen two as well, so we just need to choose two more. Okay, so here we have 2C2 times 6C2 and the number of ways is 15. So again, okay, the concept of probability in order to find probability of event C, it's equal to number of outcomes for that event divided by total number of outcomes, right? Okay, so because our NS is 70, 70 is what? 70 is the number of ways of choosing four letters from it without any condition, yeah? Okay, so we have this 15 which is the nc divided by 70 which is the ns so we get the answer as 3 over 14. okay what do you think about this okay are we good so far zaid and haris yes madam Okay, so I hope that you are able to understand yeah, this concept. Okay, and please print out the lecture notes and complete the lecture notes. Lah, okay, so that you'll be able to understand better. Okay, what about the rest? Do you have any comment? Okay, so if you have any question, then you can write down in the live chat. Yeah? Okay, so setakat ni tak ada soalan. Okay, so Azari kata tak ada. Alright, so uh, yeah, so this is, we almost reached the finishing line. Huh? So it's half past 10 now. Okay, so I hope um, that is all for today. Okay, so we are able to accomplish up to uh, third learning outcome. Okay, so we will continue this Friday huh, with the rest. Okay, because my target is to finish topic 8 by, two, by this week. So that we will be able to continue with topic nine next week. Okay, because okay, um, we have only four weeks left. Okay, so Shafa, no question. So that's all for today. Okay, so thank you, Haris and Zahid, okay, for the company. And thank you everyone else here, okay.
for joining us. Alright, so I hope okay, you now able to understand the probability concept and we will discuss further in tutorial. Okay. Okay, so I uh, I stop here. Okay, so again, thank you everyone. Okay, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you, madam. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, madam.